Lolo, last time we were sitting here, it was before the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham, and you were pretty excited about your chances of being able to get Nui their first medal. And, uh, well, I guess it was uh, mission accomplished. Well, it, it, um, I've got to confess, Tony, the every coach will say that, you know. <laughs> you know, we, we can't say that we're going there to make up the numbers, you know. I mean, yeah, we certainly, but we went in there not to make up the numbers. Uh, and although we, I, I believe that our boys are good enough to win medals, I, I also understand it's going to be a tough ask because we're fighting big nations, you know, um, with money and numbers and talent and, you know, and talents and, uh, yeah, but uh, I, I say that, and, and Eric Coach will say that, but I know it's going to be a hard ask. Uh, but it, the least we can do is like we're not going there to make up the numbers and we're going to be respected. But we came back with medal, you know. I actually expect, expected two medals. Um, but one of our guys uh, uh, won the, the bronze medal, the heavyweight, Duke Williams. And um, Xavier Ikinofo, he, was, he also made it to the quarterfinal. And he was very, very unlucky not to win a medal. I, I thought he did enough to to win the fight. He pushed uh, his opponent from, from India and the last two around and the guy was running, you know. But, um, you know, the, 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 the judges uh, saw it differently, but, you know, we, we took the experience. I, I saw when you went over um, on, on your social media that there was a huge wait at the, when you arrived there. And I just wonder, if, you know, with the COVID protocol was so strict, did, did it uh, relax later on in the games, or how, how did you get around that? It must have been a bit frustrating. It, it, it took us uh, 30 hours to get there. And once you get there, it took us another over 70 hours to get to the village. <laughs> so it almost a third of the, tra of the time traveling there, we had to wait. It's the longest queue I've ever waited in my life. I mean, I've even gone watch the All Blacks, you know. You know, you're in a long queue, but it only take you half an hour, and that's not too bad. This one here, there were so many people, because they, they didn't just test the athlete, they test the officials and everyone that's going to the village. So uh, we waited, you know, for over three hours, you know, over three hours, I think, just to get at the front. That's after we went an hour and a half at the uh, airport to, to make sure that we get uh, the right transportation and we have our, our, um, our volunteers, you know, and, and make sure that all our bags go into this vehicle, this, this truck, and make sure we go to the right place and, you know. Um, eventually we, we, we got to the, to the testing station and we had to wait there for over another f uh, three and a half hours just to get to the front, and after we tested, we had to wait for another couple of hours for the test to arrive, you know, so, uh, but, you know, uh, we were entertained by, lucky that we had the Samoan and the Raros, and the, they have, uh, they have their, their music box on, <laughs> and everybody was dancing. Next minute, the J Jamaicans now played their music too, and other African, net. so it, it wasn't too bad, but, yeah, it, it, uh, it's one of those things that, you know, you either you choose to enjoy yourself or choose to get stressed about it. There's nothing we can do about it. We might as well try and enjoy yourself somehow. But yeah, we, eventually we got to the village and after nine o'clock. We arrived there at about, about two o'clock or before that in the airport and then we didn't get to the village after 9 p.m. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was a long time. <laughs> Um, before you left, you talked a little bit about the uh, the draw was going to play a bit of the. You need a little bit of luck in the draw. How did the draw go for you? Yeah, we we had a good draw, I felt, but uh, you know I, I wouldn't say luck because it, I mean anyone in there fighting in a tournament, they going in there with intention of winning medals, you know. So uh, and they representing the countries. Um, but we, um, all our guys got, out of our four boxes, three of them got a bye, which is good. I'm, I was happy with that. I can't ask for, you know, for more. 
But the guy that we, uh, we didn't have a buy, he had about, about 30 people in his division. And he came up against uh, one of the top fighters in the tournament who made it to the final, uh, who made it to the, to the semi-final. Mm -hmm. The Canadian guy uh, who won his division and uh, he fought against Cuban and Americans and all that, you know. Um, and he was an uh, Olympian, uh, uh, Japan Olympian. So it was, it was but our, our boy, although he had less than a dozen fights, he, uh, De Niro Clark, he, he gave him, a, he kept him honest. He just, just in experience, he just stopped and then the, the referee stopped the fight in the second round, but I felt that if he let him go, I would have, I would have make him come out strong in the last round. He's a tough kid. But, uh, you know, uh, Xavier, he got a bye and then he fought uh, a Cameroon boxer. Uh, and the Cameroon boxer is from Africa. He already had two professional fights where he won both of them by knockout. Uh, and Xavier beat him. And uh, then of sudden, where the hell is New Air, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and the Cameroon is 26.5 million people, you know, and, and um, they look up, they go up near with 1,600 people, you know. <laughs> yeah, but there are some funny stories in there, you know. We, we had this, this Pommy guy, he was a volunteer, he said, where's New Because this, this lady from Ken, Kenya asked me, where, 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 where's New Way? We're in a small island in the Pacific. And I said, she said, how many people? About 1,600 people. She laughed. But the Pommy guy, uh, he was worse. <laughs> He said, bet you're not as small as uh, at the uh, Falkland Island. And then he yelled out to the, to the Falkland Island bowling team because women and children and, and, and I mean young, young people. He said, hey, you guys all here, who's staying home to look after all the houses? <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were sicky. <laughs> but I had to laugh at the time. <laughs> yeah, but no, no, it was good. And then, um, of course, Duke had a double buy. And he ended up fight uh, only one fight to get to the quarter final, and then he already got a medal. But you know, uh, he fought at the semi against uh, Arthur from Samoa, who even from the Pacific, you know, he's been doing really well in Europe, and 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 he won the silver last time. So he was he was one of the guys that you know, medal prospect, even to win a gold. You know, he's a very very tough uh, competitor, and a very good fighter. So he, came, uh, he kept him honest, but the challenge is that uh, that young guy went through, you know, it's, you know, I have uh, so much respect for him after the fight that, uh, even before the fight, see Tony, two months before the, the fight, he had an ultrasound and, uh, and uh, MRI, um, you know, x-rays on, on his shoulder, injury, which is, he had his shoulder during the uh, the nationals. It, the doctor uh, explained, you know, the doctor's name is Benjamin Speed, one of the best in the country. He said the tour is so severe that even cortisol shot won't have any effect on him. So he had to he had to fight with pain, train with pain, and he missed a lot of, of training because of pain. And then two weeks before we, uh, we left, after sparring, he, he, he said to me, uh, man, I feel like crap. Uh, you know, I said, look, go and test, COVID test. And he tested negative, but he had a really, really bad flu. You know, like his body was aching. He was, you know, like, you know, his, you know um, he was really, really sick. So, uh, so he missed out a few days training. But when he came out of the flu, he tested positive for COVID-19, <laughs> you know. So the poor guy, and on the last week, one of his best uh, close friends got murdered. And, uh, but I said, bro, if you, if you want to respect your friend and, and, you know, come to training, because you have to, uh, that's the only way you can honor, you know, by doing well at the game. So he, he, he set up training, only to get there. When we got there with that marathon waiting, he waited all day long in the front, then he got failed, you know. The, got <laughs> uh, failed the, the COVID test, so he had to, they put him in isolation for another three more oh. days. So um, anyway, just cut a long story short, he was the one that won us the medal. <laughs> so, <laughs> but
but I, I believe he went in there about 50 percent or even less Tony you know with just of the injury and then the sickness and you know every trainer know the last three weeks before a, a fight is the most crucial time well he hardly trained in the last three weeks you know because of the shoulder and sickness and COVID and then we got there okay we can touch things up in more time he got us to land three more days <laughs> so it get worse and worse and worse but you know he, he won us the medal <laughs> hey, tell us what the the um, the feeling was, uh, you know, because like, you had the bowling team over there and there was quite a few officials were there. W what was the, you know, when the first medal was won for the country? Oh man, country? I, it, it, it was a, uh, it was amazing, Tony. I mean, it, uh, the the it just so happened that the prime minister, uh, the mini the premier of, of from Newey was in the team as well, in the bowling club, and, and they, they were all so proud. Uh, even took me out and shot me a cup of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he's, he's a good guy, you know, uh, and they're really into the sport. Yeah, but we, we definitely, we knew what we we're up against, Tony. We knew that we find the best in the world. And uh, we knew we were punching above our weight, but we never once thought that we were underdogs, you know. You know and, and, and I love it going in to any type of tournament being the underdogs anyway I mean that's what happened in Belmore with Ray and them and took on the world and you know you know I seem to be uh, we seem to be doing much better as a Kiwi you know as, as, as when people write us off so yeah um, tell us what happens now like because it's it's over and and there's a was everybody training here before Do they have their own gyms or are they coming back to Belmoral we go. Uh, well, what happened, so how it all started, uh, we, we always run a summer camp at, at um, December after the Christmas. And I ran into uh, or, or talking to, to Travis uh, uh, Tapu he's one of the veterans, you know, for New End Boxing. He represented New End during the last Commonwealth Games. and. Um, and I knew that he was going to be fighting for New Way because he told me he was qualified through the South Pacific game he was where he won a medal. And he, uh, you know, as we talked, uh, I said, look, um, we're going to help you with, the, with your training because I know his father um, at the Manigal Boxing Gym. We used to train there with Wayne Wanger, you know, in the, back in the days with Jimmy Thunder and all those guys. And I knew that he was the one to look after the gym and nobody coaching him. And so I offered to help him and said, come down, you know, we've got a couple of new boys at the, at the gym. They can help you prepare for the fights. Um, so he offered me if, uh, if I'm interested in going with him to the game because he didn't have any coach. I, I gave him a, a polite sort of no. By, well, I wasn't lying. I said, look, at the time I was very, very much in pain, I had my, my knee was really, really bad. And, uh, you know, and, and, and arthritis and everything, it, it was just, to me it was, you know, it was a wrong time because we just uh, started, a, a, we started a gym and then we lost five months to the COVID-19, like, like everyone else, we, we suffer from that and we need to, to build on it. And um, so uh, when he asked me, I, I gave him a, a polite no. Uh, but then he told uh, the the chef de mission of the new uh, new Wayne team, uh, Tony Edwards, uh, and Tony Edwards uh, rang me up. He wanted to come and meet me and have a look at, at our new Wayne boxers training here, which is which was uh, Duke Williams and uh, Xavier, you know, Ignofo. So uh, he showed up. And he had to talk to the to the boys. Do you mind if I ask the boys? You know, yeah, yeah. Talk to the boys, and you know, so in addition to uh, to the boys, and um, found that they related, and uh, he wanted them to see if they uh, they want to represent New Way. So oh, look, you need to talk to them and talk to their family. You know, I'm I'm just here helping them. You know, so he, after a few phone calls back and forth, the boys agreed, and the family. So, um, so we start our, 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 our campaign planning up, you know, from, from that time, 
you know, to the to July. So and the idea is to train them, then put them on a local tournament to, you know, just to get more experience and uh, you know, and more fights and prepare. So they end the Golden Gloves and New Zealand National, where Duke won the national and uh, Xavier won the Golden Gloves. Uh, and was the box of the tournament, and so Niue was very, very happy. And we add on another boxer later on. His name is uh, De Niro Clark. Um, and uh, you know they were so happy for our, our development that they asked me to, you know, to. So I, I said yes, you know. Uh, but I got into Niue team same way I got in the Tongan team. I was just following my boxers, you know. Two of the boxers were training here with, with me full time. So I'm just, you know, I just follow them. Just like I was following uh, Junior Fa, Doug Viney, all my other boxers, Tongan, you know, and, and represent Tonga. So it wasn't a, a case of me planning of going to Olympic game. I just followed, I just followed my boxers. And that's how I end up at the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, history repeating itself. <laughs> What's the best um, road for them to go down now? How, how do you, like you come back from that and then um, what's the next move? H are they better off staying amateur or are they better turning professional? What, what's your thoughts on them? I mean, you know, the, the first thing for them now or what I advise them to do is to have a rest, you know, spend time with the family, you know, sum up things, had to be honest with the, with themselves or what went wrong or what, you know, what they, they needed to do, how could they do things better. Uh, obviously, um, Chuk's going to go and, and um, go on and, you know, go and have operation, surgery on his shoulder. Uh, but you know the old days, Tony. You can either take one or over the other. But now is that, uh, as I mentioned before, the guy who fought uh, uh, Xavier, he already had two professional fights. So Iba allow amateur boxers now to fight pro and earn some money, and um, so they can do that if they choose to do that. They can do that. Uh, Dave Nike was doing that, and still fight the amateur. But New Zealand uh, is, uh, have a different sort of rules than most countries. And I think in New Zealand you only have to, you're only allowed to have five pro fights and then you either come back to amateur or go pro. Like they, you know, you, you have to choose one or the other. I'm not saying it's a good or bad thing, but given the fact that most boxers, every boxers here, when they go and, and, and fight at the world champion and other big tournament overseas, their family had to pay the money, you know, because they don't have the funding here to, to look after those young boxers. So I think it's a good idea to let them fight pros so that way they can fund their trips and, you know, and their team to go over. But, you know, uh, I don't control that, you know, so yeah. Mm. Uh, cheeky question to the... Uh any of them do any kicking? Yes, they do. Just in case the boxing go the wrong <laughs> side, then they get kicked. <laughs> yeah, now, now, a lot of them, they do cross training and even wrestling and other training, you know, that we do here. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Just in case the fight go the other way. And <laughs> <laughs> Plan B. Plan B, yeah. <laughs> I know the gym's growing because I see you on the social media and, and in, in the past you were a, a very busy promoter. Um, do you think now you've got these higher class fighters coming through that you'll do, do a little bit more promoting? than? My, my focus, Tony, is probably a lot more to do with the grassroots and the kids. But, uh, but that's something that actually... Um, sparked more interest when I was over in the UK. I, 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 yes, we need to have our guys to have more active in amateur fights in, in, in locally, but you can fight amateur and, and local fight as, as many times as you like. You won't find out where you're at until you start fighting the, the top level overseas. 
to just to gauge and, and, and know. Most fighters here, Oli, I mean, our guys, that's why I'm so proud of our, our New Wayne team. That's their first ever international yeah. fights. And they had no idea what it's like. You know, we, we just train hard and prepare for it. But unless you do it, you never know where, where you stand, you know, compared to some of the, you know, top uh, world-class fighters. Uh, so it's no exception here with New Zealand. We need to, yeah, you need to have more international fights. And, and um, you know, guys like Dave Naika and David Light, you know, their, their families and that was able to fund them to go and fight overseas. And you can see the difference that made, you know, for them. But after talking to the, to the English uh, coaching staff, uh, they have so much money. I mean, these guys, they put 14 million pounds into their boxing alone. I think that's more money than New Zealand put through the, the swimmers and runners yeah. and everything, you know. Like, you know? Yeah. But, um, and they said that the interest is coming here. And I said, okay, we'll, we'll keep in touch. Because what I'm, what I'm trying to do, I've been networking, uh, not just over there, but also with the, with the Samoan, Fiji and Raros. Uh, new end, and, and, and of course Tonga if they come to the party. I would mind one day to have a, a, a Pacific team, combined Pacific team and take on the English team. But I made it clear to the English team that don't bring your A team, bring your B team, you know. And then if we do well, then we can bring the A team later. But they, they got so much money, they got A, B and C team. You know, even the development team to come here, they'll be hard to beat, you know. Because uh, those guys are a lot more hungry than the guys at the top. Because I think when they get to the top, I think that the first pick or the A team, they get wages. Some of those wages, they, they got more than a, than a CEO here, you know, yeah. just to box full time, you know. So, um, yeah, but I, I had to talk with them. I, I talked with the, with the Irish coach, uh, asked him for help, and, and he gave me some ideas. I uh, guess email like John Conlon, that was his son Conlon that fight uh, pro, pro, you know, fight uh, Lemachenko, you know, that, that's, his, uh, that's his father. He's a really, really good, good, good guy. And um, he gave his email, he's going to send um, periodization training program. And, you know, I mean, I, I have a system on my own anyway, but I know that they have a good result and always willing to learn new stuff. So uh, he's going to help out, uh, and maybe in the future he might even want to bring a team here also. But I know that uh, Arthur Tassam won a boxer, won a silver. He's been spending a lot of months in, in Ireland training in there and then represent the, the team when they fight the European competitions. And, and you can see where he is, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, um, you know, he's in a high level. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So you you not only win and uh, <laughs> got got the the prize, you uh, also look for the future as well. Oh, I mean it, it's uh, you never stop learning, Tony. You know, and that's my attitude. You know, I've been in the game over forty years, but I always learn things and try to learn as much as I can. Like a you know, like it's, it's something new. I'm always you know that's my attitude anyway. So. And, and uh, you know, talking to these guys and, uh, you know, and, and see how well their, 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 their boxers do. I, I want to learn that. I want to know, you know. And, um, and, and I will never stop learning. It's great to be. <laughs> <laughs> I, always, uh, I always love talking to you, Lolo, because I always learn something as well. Thank you.